ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, and he officially weighs 175 pounds. In his professional career, he has 21 victories, including 17 knockouts, with only two defeats. He comes to this ring tonight looking for revenge and redemption to prove to the world that he is not just one of the two best, but that he is the very best light heavyweight in the world today. From Orlando, Florida, the number one ranked contender and former light heavyweight champion of the world, Antonio Magic Man. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gray, his official weight, 174 pounds. In 1998, he was voted that Olympic's most outstanding boxer, and now, as a professional, his record stands at 49 victories, including 38 knockouts, with only one defeat, which was disqualification and reversed by a first round KO in rematch. He is universally recognized as pound for pound, the greatest fighter over the past decade. Tonight, we turn the page to another chapter of the saga of a boxing superstar. From Pensacola, Florida, presenting the former middleweight world champion, former super middleweight world champion, former heavyweight world champion, the reigning, defending, three-time light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. to have it, so make sure you have it. Okay, baby. All right, you guys, I gave you instructions from the dressing room. Do you have any questions? I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? Let's not ask questions like that. Let's touch gloves and go to work. Tonight, Roy. Let's go to work. Antonio Tarver <laughs> wants to correct the scoring of the first fight. <laughs> Roy Jones, in effect, wants to avenge a victory that was too close for his comfort. Let the fisticuffs begin. They don't want to wait for the bell. Emmanuel, have you seen that yeah. before? I love it. No, I've never saw it, but I would like to see it go off to. Never seen it. <laughs> I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? <laughs> what a start. Oh, he's very, very confident. One thing Jones told us in a meeting yesterday, he said, you know, you never saw Tarver with his back to the ropes last November. That was because I was too tired. He said, tomorrow night, I'll put Tarver against the ropes. And one of his most effective punches sometimes is that counter jab of Royce. Whenever a southpaw jabs, he likes to counter it real quick by slipping and then shooting his own jab very close. They faint and face each other and faint again. And the crowd already rested, wonders what's going on. But Larry, what's really happening here is that you have two natural counter punchers against each other, That's right? That's right, and Roy Jones is taking a more positive, aggressive stance, but he's not throwing any punches yet. Neither is Tarver. Neither man wants to go first. Finally, Tarver leaves. After about a minute, we see a punch. Yeah, both of these guys are really technical fighters anyway by nature, so this is only normal for them to fight this way. You have to remember that what made the first fight dramatic was the jeopardy that Jones was in. They, uh, a lot of it was this kind of uh, posturing and looking for position. And up, up, up until the times that Roy would actually go to the ropes, a lot of the first fight was this way, until Jones would go to the ropes and say, come on and throw your punches, Antonio. And there were boos in the house during the first fight from time to time. And already Jones is much more active and much more effective in round one. That was the case on November 8th, when he seemed totally out of it those first two rounds. 
and trying to keep the fight right in the middle of the ring where he has an advantage. Straight right hand upstairs, straight right hand to the body. The straight right hand won the fight for Jones in November because he needed to win it that way, pecking to the body over and over with the right hand. LeBron is not going to the ropes at all so far in this fight. And I don't think he's going to be on the ropes probably at all, it's particularly early in the fight. If it does, it'll be late on. Well, if he has the stamina to stay on his feet and move, he'll do it. Now they're fighting in the center of the ring, and his hand speed and foot speed is being a problem for Talbot to deal with. Because at this weight, there's never been hand speed and foot speed like Roy Jones. Barber hadn't gotten off really, and Jones is landing his right hand. So even though much of the first round was a phony war, posing and staring and looking, Jones has scored enough. He's scored enough to win the round, possibly, but he hasn't really been able to penetrate or find a style yet that can penetrate through Tarver effectively. Tarver lands the right hand. Good right jab. And another Tarver jab, and Jones answers with a hard right hand of the body as round one comes to a close. All right, baby. That's what I want. Just keep the control. Mm -hmm. Keep the control. You do it. Put it in the middle. Keep the control. Keep your fights going. Keep your fights going. Okay? Yep. This joke ain't coming to you. Let's keep him going back. Uh -huh. Only round one. Let's get that jab working now. Okay, okay let's get the jab going. Too much respect, okay? Pete. Don't give him that much Show respect. Up, baby. Okay, when he's backing you up, stay Stop low. Stop using that word, respect me. Okay, people. okay, baby. So that was you. Respect then let's go out there and get yours. Okay. Come on. Then go get yours, baby. Okay? Let's go get yours. Okay? Same as the last fight. Ain't nothing different. Okay? He's just trying to bully you. Okay? We ain't here for that. Okay, baby? Stay low. Keep that jab working now. Jones's good friend Derek Smoke Gaynor is seated in round two. Between rounds, after listening to Alton Merkerson, Jones nearly craned his head all the way out between the ropes to listen to whatever it was Gaynor had to say. So evidently he has a lot of respect for Gaynor. It's interesting, Merkerson has been with Roy throughout his entire career, and that's really rare today. It means about going on those 16 years almost. Well, Roy Jones has been uh, very loyal to people who work for him and to his friends. He's a good man, and he's helped a lot of boxers down there in his town. And in addition, he's one of the few guys that continually contributes a lot to helping Drew McClellan. He's been the chief benefactor to McClellan, who has been in distress ever since his 1995 fight with Nigel Benn. Of course, McClellan and Jones were rivals in the amateurs. And might have fought each other as professionals. Yeah, you know what? It's still interesting that even though he knew that he may fight Drew, when Drew would fight a lot of fights, he would actually come to the fights early in Joe's career and support and even worked in the corner with him one time. Now in round two, very much the same kind of action that you saw toward the end of round one. Tarver stalking now more aggressively, more concertedly, and seemingly accepting the role of the leader in the counterpuncher's war. And there's a hard left hand by Antonio Tarver. Jones tries to come back with a right to the body and a right upstairs and another right to the middle of the belly. You know, it's interesting. I'm watching Tava. He seems to still be giving Roy problems. Roy has not found a way still to get a sustained attack against him. And down goes Jones on a hard left hand. And that is the first that Roy Jones has ever been hurt. Only Lou DeVal ever knocked him down. Jones may not get up. And he makes it up. It's and over. Jay Lady stops the fight. And Jones is still on Queer Street. And that's amazing. What a statement by Antonio Tarver. One big left hand shot. He said, what excuses do you have tonight, Roy? No excuses. And now there's a fight breaking out in the ring. There's a fight between supporters in the ring, and our cameraman, Gordy Sager, has gone down. Jim. The action has been quelled in the ring. I'm not really sure what was going on, but I know that Gordy Sager our cameraman went down and appears to be okay. Alton Merkerson said Roy Jones has gotten old, and you could see it because he was throwing one punch at a time, and he was measured by 
Tarver. And he never, never found a way to really get through to Tarver. And Tarver just patiently took his hand and really that, straightened that is, up. That is the first time in his career he's really been hurt. He's gone down before one time, but there was a perfect left hand. Roy never saw it coming. Roy is out. And Roy may be out of boxing. And that's why Tarver wanted to be the counterpuncher, because he answered Roy's right hand with a perfect left hand shot that knocked Jones out. There it was. One previous knockdown against Lou Duval, that was a flash in Madison Square Garden in New York. This is the first time Roy Jones has been hammered by a power punch, and it's cost him a fight. In two fights now, we have to say that Tarver has bested Roy Jones. Unquestionably. There's the answer. You know, Jones was still a heavy favorite in this fight, despite everything that happened last November. Here's his valiant effort to get up, but when he managed to get to his feet, at nine, I believe, Emmanuel, yeah, he was, was still wobbling. It, it, if he'd have got on up and they let the fight continue, he would have been seriously you know, and hurt. There, there's one other thing, Emmanuel. When a fighter has spent most of his career trying to avoid punches and never taking a lot of punches, when he gets nailed with a big punch, that's what can happen. And this was very interesting. That, you know, this Tava seems to have his number, and the punch he caught him with, it was very difficult to avoid that. Tava had just been hit himself, and he got right on top of Roy, hit him with a short punch that Roy never even saw. Right. You have to say that Antonio Tava not only talks a good fight, he <laughs> fought a good fight. Absolutely. <laughs> and here's Tarver's ultimate revenge. He won't have to worry about what the judges see in the fight tonight. They can go home just as Jones can go home because Tarver sent everybody home with that big left hand. <clears throat> Antonio Tarver rules the light heavyweight division now. And of course, just as was the case throughout most of Jones's career, Aside from Roy Jones, there isn't much significant big name opposition in the light heavyweight division. And suddenly now, there will be speculation, Emmanuel, we'll talk about it later. There will surely be speculation about whether Tarver wants to go up and test his southpaw style as a heavyweight. Because his height and his natural body style might give him the chance to do it. Let's go to Michael Buffer with the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jay Nady reaches the count of 10. At one minute, 41 seconds of round number two. The winner by knockout victory. And once again, the light heavyweight champion of the world, Antonio Magic Man Tarver. This is for the fallen soldiers, baby. I dedicated this fight to them. Bring our people home from Iraq, baby. So they can reunite with their family. Tampa, Florida, Orlando, Florida, we on the map. I love you all. The man I loves to talk. All. And right now, he can talk all he wants. Yes, he can. He can talk for the next few months if I he wants tell to. I him to shut up. <laughs> I'd like to listen, quite frankly. Because this is going to be a great interview. This man is as exciting once he opens his mouth as anybody we've had in the sport. You made that point before the fight. Yeah, I'd love to hear him talk. I mean, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense that he comes up with some good phrases. Oh, and there's going to be a whole lot of <laughs> I told you so. Yeah. And uh, we at HBO might come into harm's way just a little bit, but that'll be fun, too. Let's find out as we go to Larry Merchant with Antonio Tarver. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. A bit chaotic. Okay, fellas, please quiet a little bit. So I can hear Antonio. Congratulations, Antonio. You, you said before the fight to Roy, no excuses this time. Did you see that he was vulnerable the way he was fighting you? No, the man came out strong. He tried to dictate early, but I stayed confident. I stayed composed. And, uh, you know, I just I knew it was a matter of time. When God is with you, can nothing be against you. And I knew it was my time. Judge that. Well, Judge that, baby. Judge you, that. 
Well, could you see that he was throwing one punch at a time? He really was trying to, to make you take the lead and that he was open or was it just a punch you threw that landed? No, it was, the, you know, hey, knockouts happened in boxing. I was dressed down in defense. I saw everything coming. And I knew that, you know, when he came in and, and tried to get offensive, I was going to let my hands go. And I was in great shape thanks to Buddy McGirt. We worked real hard. And I never gave up on my dream. So here I am, Larry. Obviously, this big crowd and all the people out there are shocked by what happened. Even you seem a little surprised the way it ended. Larry, if you knew the steps I had to take to get here, it's just a jubilee. You know, I'm just, I'm just happy, and I just know that God lives and uh, can't be denied. Can't be denied. All right, let's take a look at the knockout, and you tell us what you saw and why you did what you did. Right there. He missed. Perfectly timed. We both threw at the same time, and I just turned it over shorter than he did, and it caught him right on the kiss. That was a perfect punch. Perfect punch. All right, we're going to take a look from another angle. Describe it again. Okay. Right there, he's trying to bait me. He's trying to faint. I missed my jab. But right here, I'm still in position, and I beat him to the punch with a strong overhand left. That was a beautiful, beautiful executed punch. What is this? What does this night mean to you, Antonio? It means it means everything to me because for so long people say I couldn't, people say I wouldn't, but I never gave up on my dream. I never gave up on myself. I knew that Antonio Tarver was the best fighter in the whole wide world. Pound for pound, baby. Pound for pound. You said you, you said you were like the two of you were like Siamese twins who grew up together. You parted. You came back together again. How would you describe those former Siamese twins now? Well, you know what? We still stuck together because this fight will go down in the history of boxing as an instant classic. This is Marvin Hagler Hearns all over again. And right now, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that. Without the great Roy Jones, none of this would be possible. It takes a great fighter to beat a great fighter. And you're looking at a great fighter tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's just take one brief look into the future, Antonio. Do you want to stay in the light heavyweight? Are you open to an invitation to fight uh, one of the what, hundreds of heavyweight champions out there? What do you see, or is it just too soon to even think about it? Right now, with a great, a great, a great, excuse me, a great, a great, a great victory like tonight, I'm going to bask in it and enjoy it as long as I can. But like I said, if the money is seven, is six feet seven, seven inches tall. I'm willing to fight anybody. <laughs> All right, well, you got laryngitis at last. At last. <laughs> After I'm, talking I'm, I'm for finally, six months. I'm finally at a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think we'd see that in this lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Don Keen, the greatest promoter in the world, for believing in this fight and for believing in me. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ant Magic thank you Antonio. Magic Congratulations. Oh, uh, uh, one word, one word, Don. Is Antonio Tarver a candidate? to fight for one of the uh, heavyweight titles that you that you promote. Yes, he is. He's a candidate for anything. Tonight he did a super thing. He beat Superman. He certainly showed that he's a great, great fighter. This was a shock and amazement of the world, as Muhammad Ali would say. And we're just delighted that Antonio Tarver came in and made this fight what it can be. It was a great cash card all the way through. And all of my heavyweight champions are ready to fight anybody. Vitaly Klitschko is the top of the list for Lehman Brewster, for John Reese, or for Chris Bird. And now we got a new one in there with, with this young man here who just shocked the world tonight on HBO pay-per-view. That's Tarver, Antonio Tarver. Thank you very much, Don. Jim. Here's one of the great elements of this story. Ever since Olympic coaches soured on Antonio Tarver in Atlanta in 1996, he has been subjected to a backroom, behind-the-back insidious campaign it, it, during which he has received the worst insult that can ever be hurled at an athlete over and over and over. All of us in the sport have heard people say, Antonio Tarver has no heart. It's such a rubric that it was almost a given, an article of faith. Well, they'll never be able to say it again. No one should ever utter, after what he did six months ago, after what he did tonight, that Antonio Tarver has no heart. That is disproven forever. Here's another fighter with heart. Let's see how he responds to his worst moment. Larry Merchant with Roy Jones. Thank you, Jim. Roy. 
There's a first time for everything. Yeah, you know how that goes there. And there's no excuses on my part. I come out, I do what I do. You know, I've had an illustrious career. I've enjoyed what I've done. Um, you know, and guys always are up to fight Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. has a hard time getting up to fight guys. You know what I mean? Because it's really nobody out there that Roy Jones Jr. really feel that we're about. So, you know, it happens. But you have to feel that in terms of preparation, you gave your best. Yeah, I did. I, I gave it what I had, you know, and I got myself best prepared that I could, you know, under the situation. I'm not making no excuses, and, uh, you know, it happens like that sometimes. Do you think that you're trying to stay in the middle of the ring and uh, take control of the fight in some way left you open? Uh, I'm not really sure. I have to look at it and see again. Um, the main thing was is that, you know, I'm a warrior. I'm going to fight, so, you know, if, even when I don't feel well, I don't feel good about certain things. I'm still going to fight. So I'm always going to go down and fight. And I thank God for blessing me, giving me the opportunity to come out and do what are I you, do. Are you, do are you suggesting there is uh, something wrong with you coming no, in no, tonight? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Roy Jones Jr. is going to fight regardless. He don't care. You know what, I'm so, what, did you, what did you two say to each other uh, after the fight? I said good fight, good shot. That's all I can say. All right, we'd like you to take a look, uh, your, your second look at it, but this time you may get a different view of what happened. Right. I threw a right hand, and he came up, I backed out, and he threw an overhand right off of my right hand. I tried to throw a hook, and he threw an overhand. It was a good shot, very good shot. Has anything like this ever happened to you before, anywhere, anytime? Yeah, I have, I've been uh, knocked down as an amateur once. Something similar to that happened to me, and um, you know, it happens to the best of us. What does this mean for the rest of your career. Do you want to fight Tarver again? Do you want to go back to the heavyweight division? Or is it over? I could fight Tarver again. I could go back to the heavyweight division. Actually, fighting somebody like Tarver is not really of interest to me because that, that's why I don't get motivated for these type of fights. The heavyweight fights were the better ones, were the funner ones. And then I let myself come down and try to you know, do this for the people, for the fans, and I should have left it alone. But I did it, and you know, the guy won a good fight. I have no excuse. I thank God for blessing me, giving me the opportunity to come out and do what I do. I did. I gave my all and under the circumstances that I could, and that was that. So the, you're suggesting that uh, when you come back, you're not going to go out on this kind of a defeat, and you'll come back as a heavyweight. No, I ain't said nothing. Yeah, I ain't said what I might do. You know, I ain't sure if I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna stay the same. I ain't sure what I'm gonna do yet. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I don't have no more interest in it than I do now, then it's best for me to stop. You've accomplished everything you've ever wanted to accomplish in boxing. Exactly. And these fights are just icing on your big cake. Basically, you know what I mean? It's like for me, I have no real enjoyment in doing nothing like this. I would rather fight the heavyweights. When you fight a guy like this, it's like, what you fighting for? What you doing it for? Thank you again, Roy Jones. Thank you. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry and uh, Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, many in the arena still just standing here, sort of basking in the, the shock and the excitement of what has happened with Antonio Tarver's sudden reemergence at the top of the light heavyweight division. We're going to take a look back at the second round, the round in which Jones was knocked out. And I want you to talk about what we're looking at, keeping in mind that Larry Merchant suggested that he thought he could see signs of the aging fighter in Roy Jones in that he was only throwing one punch at a time. Well, with, you know, Jim, I didn't really see that. I saw Roy fight normal. I think it's Tava himself. Tava's just got Roy's start number, and he has this little strange way out of time of just back and back just enough where Roy can't counter effectively. And it's just a lot of us just just Tava. And, and the thing that I said before the show that he would have to do in order to beat Roy was to be able to deal with the speed and to exchange with him in the ring instead of just, you know, back and back all the time. And that's what he did. He got into an exchange and he came out the better of it. How about the hand speed with the left hand when he was able to trade punches with Roy and get there first? Roy, Roy still has a little better speed, but Tava just has that little style, little rhythm that's just a, a problem for him. And he works that little right jab over top that bothers Roy a lot, too, because most guys don't even try to jab with Roy. Remember, Jim, before the fight, he said possibly Tarver would have given him problems on the best day he ever had. Oh, you said that. Right, and, and the reason is that he's a counterpuncher and very, very patient, okay? He doesn't let Jones uh, outpatient him, if that's 
a word in this in this context. And he made Jones a little anxious to get to him. Well, I don't think any so fight vulnerable. has ever gone in with this kind of confidence against Roy Jones. I mean, obviously, he was equally confident last November. But tonight, it produced that result. Well, I have to give him a lot of credit. He went in and he was aggressive. He stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roy. Where the first fight, he would just back off every time Roy would come after him. And I just think if they would fight a million times, he's going to always be a problem for Roy Jones. He's kind of an unusual physical specimen for our sport. 35 years old, <laughs> but largely untouched at 35. That makes him similar to some people in the heavyweight division, incidentally. Yeah don't, yeah, don't forget, he actually quit boxing for about five years. And after seeing Roy Jones win the Olympics, then he decided to get back into boxing. So he's well rested. And he has that right jab. And that jab was a big, big factor tonight. Roy never seemed to get away from that jab. It was a it was a piss and he jabs over top of Roy's shoulder which makes it very difficult especially when you're a tall guy. What are Antonio's possibilities now. Could you see the heavyweight thing. Being the heavyweight division is what it is today and Antonio Tav is six foot two and they say walks around wearing about two hundred and ten pounds. Yeah I could see him possibly fight as a heavyweight and being effective. He's a very intelligent fighter. Michael Moore is the only southpaw fighter ever to have held heavyweight championship belts. Now here comes another southpaw who might conceivably go into the division. Larry, your final thoughts on Antonio Tarver's knockout of Roy Jones. Uh, it's an old thought, Jim, you've heard before. It could apply to a number of recent fights. We live in the theater of the unexpected. Think about what happened tonight. Think about last week with Manny Pacquiao and Marquez in which Marquez is knocked down three times in the first round and dramatically comes back to get a draw. Think about the uh, Brewster of uh, Vladimir Klitschko fight in which one which Klitschko was completely dominating Brewster and and ran out of gas. Uh, think of that wild slugfest between those two big heavyweights Vitaly Klitschko and Sanders. You just don't know what you're going to get and all the conventional wisdom in the world before the fights often gets stood on its head when they fight the fights. I'll go double on that one. Well when you spend a lot of time with Roy Jones you hear a great deal of homespun philosophy. He is full of wit and wisdom. Right now the attitude has to be philosophical as Roy Jones with his close cadre of friends and supporters, most of whom have been with him throughout his entire 16 year professional career. Repair to the dressing room to face a situation they've never dealt with before. The aftermath of a shocking and complete defeat. James Brown. All right, Jim Lampley, thank you so very much. And you know, Jim, I think the real measure of the character of a man as well is how he handles defeat. My hat is off to Roy Jones Jr. in that, as he said, prior to this bout, if I lose, I will have no excuses. He gave no excuses in the ring, and as far as I'm concerned, that's good. I ask Emmanuel Stewart right before the main event, could you detect a hint of doubt in Roy Jones's mind? He said he could, and in fact, it was well documented. Let's give a listen in Roy Jones's locker room. Yeah, that's going to going to do a punch on back. Yeah. Scared man is dangerous. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he was scared. You said it, motherfucker, scared like that. Yeah, what the problem? You seen it from the beginning. From the beginning, you seen it. He's going to be scared. He's like that. So you don't know what he might be. And he's a beard, dude. I got one in the bad head. I'm going to go in the room, but I know what's going to happen. 1992 Great Lodge. Man, you know, you know, for me, though. You know, be it ain't even that, uh, it's like, okay. you get ready, I do it fast, still get ready. It ain't that no more, you know what I mean? You be on them days almost. I feel you, when you just, well, like Mike said, when it ain't fun for you. When they did no more, you don't, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, though. Mike said, when it ain't fun no more, you, he yeah. just get out of there. Like, I want to have fun, but it ain't it ain't nothing to me to you guys, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just like, I was just there. Well, as we listen in on Roy Jones's locker room there, I'm not sure if he was referencing Tarver when he said that he was scared, but you know what? Nothing wrong with having a little fear going into the ring because this is a man's game and it served Tarver well. Tarver said that he would not back down from Roy Jones 
and he did not. Let's take one more look at the shocking left that put Roy Jones Jr. down. Tarver said he would meet him in the middle of the ring, go toe to toe. Indeed, he did. Look at the counterpunch right here, shocking the world. Roy Jones out on his feet as he slammed to the canvas, and Tarver reclaims the light heavyweight title. Tarver said that he had experienced Roy's power, he had seen his speed, and he was not afraid, and that he would make a statement. All of the talking leading up to this bout, you know what? You can talk the talk.